All right, it's Thursday, February 27th, 2025. It's the 58th day of the year, and we've got ourselves a major severe weather outbreak on the way. That's right, this morning, the Storm Prediction Center put out a very rare day six, 30% chance of seeing significant severe weather down here in Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. That's gonna be for Tuesday, March 4th. And then they've also put out a fairly rare day seven, 15% risk for about 27 million people along the southeast coast that includes Charlotte, Atlanta, Virginia Beach, and Raleigh. Okay, let's take a look at the pattern that's going to be causing all of this uh, craziness as we go into next week. It all starts off with a little clipper as we go into tomorrow. There's going to be a quick shot of snow and some colder air in the northern portion of the U.S., especially around the Great Lakes, and then eventually over into the northeast. That is going to keep some cooler weather in place all the way down into the mid-Atlantic states even, but it's not going to be extremely long-lived, especially the farther south you go look at all this warm air advection that we have from the southwest this is causing record temperatures in the southwest and the central u.s and then as far as our storms go uh, our first culprit comes into play here on sunday where you can see this tiny little divot in the jet stream here this is the remnants of a cutoff low that's going to allow for some advection of moisture from the gulf into texas and oklahoma this is going to cause some isolated severe weather i believe on sunday evening into early monday morning but this is likely going to be very scattered in nature, and it's not our severe weather outbreak that we're talking about. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center hasn't even highlighted anything for that yet. It'll probably be the day two outlook before we see anything there. Things become a lot more interesting as we go into the day on Monday, and especially into the day on Tuesday, as we're going to have a ton of moisture return and warm air advection coming up out in front of this big trough that's developing out west. It's going to send 70 degree dew points up towards the Texas and Louisiana coast. It's going to send 60 degree dew points much farther north than that and we're going to have at times 100 knot jet stream winds over Texas and Arkansas during the height of this trough ejection. This is just going to be a classic severe weather setup if I've ever seen one because we're going to have the very dynamic upper air conditions as far as the winds go and we're going to have a really dynamic situation with our dew points where we're going to have very low extremely low uh, dew points on the western side of the cold front and the dry line and we're going to have abnormally high dew points to the east of it where those meet we're likely going to see significant severe weather starting to pop up on tuesday for example maybe between 1 and 4 p.m we'll see supercells intense supercells form in eastern texas and eastern oklahoma moving into western portions of arkansas and northwestern portions of louisiana these will have a fairly significant tornado threat with them and guys it's not every day where i will say those words for a storm system that we're talking about that's six days out. And even the Storm Prediction Center is already mentioning the term strong tornadoes with this one. So I just want to emphasize that this is looking like a high end event. But these sharp boundaries between moist air and mostly dry air are going to continue to move east. Look at this 50, 60 degree dew points making it all the way up past Kentucky. This is really far north for early March. So this is going to be a pretty significant event. And then of course, we're going to have continued severe weather problems as we go into the day on Wednesday over here. Let's talk more about timing and impacts. First of all, with our little clipper system and overall cool weather lock that we've got going on over here in the Great Lakes and Northeast, we are going to have some rain showers, some isolated claps of thunder from Eastern Kentucky to West Virginia today. We're going to have some snow in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Some heavier snow is going to move into Ontario and especially the UP of Michigan and Northern Michigan as we go into Friday. That'll drop a couple of inches, maybe even in upstate New York. And then once again, in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Then we're going to deal with that cold air that's going to be locking in here for a little while. It's not going to be an Arctic plunge or anything, but it's going to be cooler than average. And then once again, on Sunday, March 2nd, we're going to have our first taste of some isolated thunderstorms, maybe some severe weather in Texas and Oklahoma. Over here as that first little system moves through, that's kind of like our warm-up event. Around this time, we're also going to see widespread snow in the Intermountain West over towards the Cascades. This is going to lead to some heavy rain in Washington and Oregon. And then every Everything really starts coming together once again on Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon, we're going to see the development of supercells, strong storms in Oklahoma and Texas, and then we're just going to see this huge storm system sweep across the mid-Mississippi River Valley into the Ohio Valley as we go into the overnight period on Monday into the early morning on Tuesday. This is likely going to cause some flash flooding problems, and then a large squall line of severe storms is going to sweep across Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, and continue to cause problems as
as we go into the heating of the day on Wednesday, where we will likely see severe storms reach as far north as Maryland and Virginia as we go into the afternoon. And then most of this up here in the northeast is just going to be some heavy rain. And then, of course, we're going to have snow farther north from that. Maybe some significant snow in Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan on Wednesday. The main thing that we're concerned about, and I think the main thing that we're going to be watching here, is the southern extent, the warm sector of this storm, as it looks like it's going to produce dangerous, severe weather. And one of the hallmarks of weather forecasting at this time range when we're talking about severe weather is looking at the low-level jet stream winds. So I often show you the mid-level 500 millibar maps, and that's a really good way to find troughs and ridges and general weather patterns. But if you look closer to the ground, you can start to see some details that help you understand the severity of the severe weather that could be possible underneath those more broad troughs. This 850 millibar wind speed signature here that we see between 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. on Tuesday, March 4th, is indicative of some of our bigger tornado outbreaks that we've ever seen, okay? So I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to use language here that hopefully makes people take this seriously, especially on the southern extent down here. If we get these low-level jet stream winds over 60, 70 miles per hour during the evening in combination with those 60, 70 degree dew points and super cellular storms, we are looking at a tornado outbreak here, likely around the Mississippi River Valley. And then the farther east this goes, the less dynamic the system becomes in terms of its ability to produce super cellular tornadoes, but it's going to be a crazy wind event, I think, for the east coast. And then we're going to have the ability for some supercells to form out in front of the line, even in the Carolinas and Georgia. And there is going to be a tornado threat farther east as well. And then on top of all of that, we're going to just have generally strong winds in the northeast and in the Ohio Valley and in the Great Lakes region as a result of the storm around the low pressure center. As it does look like this is going to be a sub 990 millibar low pressure center by the time it gets to Chicago. And that is going to mean that this is just going to be a major storm system for everyone involved, whether you're just getting wind and rain, severe weather or snow on the backside. So just to reiterate, we've got a rare 30% probability of significant severe weather, including strong tornadoes. On that day six outlook, the 15% probability goes all the way up to Knoxville, Tennessee. So this is going to be a widespread area. Lots of people are going to be hit by severe weather on this day, and it's likely going to be a very bad severe weather day. So go ahead and start letting everybody know that they need to be preparing for this. And of course, I'm going to have daily updates for you as we go forward. And then we're also going to continue to update you guys farther east. It looks like the severity of the severe weather is going to be slightly less once it gets past Atlanta, but it's still going to be quite impactful. And there's close to 30 million people that are going to be impacted by this on the East Coast on day seven or Wednesday, March 5th. These are very rare outlooks here, and we will almost certainly be live for the duration of this entire event. We might have two different 12 hour long live streams, one on Tuesday and one on Wednesday. And something else that I want to mention here is the fact that we're going to have all of this wind, right? We're going to have all of these non thunderstorm related wind gusts happening around the low pressure center. Starting tomorrow, as we see those strong winds coming from the northwest, we're going to have an elevated fire weather situation up here in the north central United States, especially in Iowa, South Dakota, and Nebraska. I'm expecting that we're going to see significant wildfires all the way through Friday, and then a new wildfire event is going to happen on the backside of our major storm system that's coming through because of all of those dry dew points that I was talking about earlier. There's going to be lots of wildfire problems in New Mexico and Texas, for example. As a result of all of this very dry, cool air coming over the vast majority of the U.S., really, but specifically right in here, we're going to have an increased wildfire risk. And I also want to make sure we are mentioning the rain. Uh, we are going to see lots of rain in the Ohio Valley up towards the northeast. Some places we'll see more than four inches of rain over the next week or so, and that could lead to flooding. We've still got some of these rivers in Tennessee and Mississippi above flood stage. So if you live in a flood prone area, pay attention to the weather, especially if you're in the red or the orange here. And then of course, we are going to have significant rainfall in the Cascades over towards the Sierra and even in the valleys closer to the coast in Washington, Oregon, and California over the next seven days. Could have a couple places that see more than six inches of rain over there and significant snow in the higher elevations. So that's pretty much all the weather talk I have for you today. We're going to have daily updates as we approach this storm system. I think the threat areas are going to get larger. We might see even up to southern Kentucky included in that day six outlook. We might see areas as far north
north of southern New Jersey included in the day seven outlook. So keep checking in. Things are going to change, but I think that we're almost certainly going to experience a widespread major severe weather outbreak here. So don't be scared. Be prepared. Go ahead and get your family ready and your workplace ready, wherever you're going to be on Tuesday, to go over your tornado action plan and, and all that good stuff. And make sure you tune in here to this channel because we're going to be live with all of our resources, letting you know exactly what's going on in real time. So hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on, and like this video so hopefully we can get this vital information out to as many people as possible. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you would like me to cover more in depth, I guess, as we go into the future. I want to make sure we're covering everything for you, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.